Hey guys, so this is a brief PowerPoint about viruses, which is covered in chapter 19 of your textbook. Down below you'll see an image of a rabies virus. The viruses have a particular structure. They do vary a bit, but there is a certain pattern that they follow. They're defined as being a non-living particle composed of a nucleic acid and a protein coat. So very, very simple. In virology, or virology, however you'd like to pronounce it, is really just the study of viruses. Viruses, as you are aware of, can cause many diseases. Viruses can also change how a cell functions. Now this is the part that makes them a little bit scary. This is a table from a different textbook that just shows you a comparison of viruses and cells. Here on the left are the characteristics of life, growth, homeostasis, metabolism, mutation, nucleic acid, reproduction, and structure. And you'll notice when you compare them from viruses to cells that there are many things that viruses don't have but cells do. For example, they don't get larger, they may not and cannot maintain homeostasis, they don't really metabolize, but yet they can mutate because they contain either DNA or RNA as their nucleic acid. And of course cells contain all of these things because these are required in order to be alive. When it comes to reproduction, viruses can only reproduce when they are in the host cell, whereas cells divide independently by the process of cell division. When it comes to structure, viruses are made up of that nucleic acid core, a covering of a protein, and sometimes they have an additional envelope as a protective mechanism. Whereas, of course, cells are created by having a cytoplasm, a cell membrane encasing that, a cytoskeleton inside of the cytoplasm, and in the case of the eukaryotic cells, organelles. Looking at additional virus characteristics, they vary in size, but in general they're quite small. They're between 200 to 250 nanometers in size, and remember that 1 billion nanometers is 1 meter, so they're really tiny. They're only visible with an electron microscope. In fact, they're so small that they're smaller than ribosomes, the smallest of the organelles. They lack nuclei, they lack cytoplasm, organelles, cell membrane, and they cannot carry out cellular functions. In fact, they can only replicate by infecting a cell and using the cell's machinery, or, or in other words, the cell's organelles and enzymes. And they have a really limited host range. They can infect a limited variety of hosts. For example, the human cold virus infects only the upper respiratory tract cells, but no other cells. Let's look carefully at some of the structure of the viruses. Here is an image or a diagram of HIV, otherwise known as human immunodeficiency virus. Now, nucleic acids have, or excuse me, viruses either have DNA or RNA as their nucleic acid. This can be helical in shape, a loop, or a long strand, and it can be double or single stranded. They sometimes have a capsid surrounding the nucleic acid, and this is a protein coat that serves as protection. They also have a viral envelope, as shown right here. And the viral envelope is going to serve as a membrane-like structure that's around the capsid. And not all viruses have this, but some do. It's lipid-based, and in fact, it's actually taken from the host cell. So you can see they truly cannot rely on themselves. And this will help out their infection of hosts. Then lastly are these glycoproteins, these little purple guys on this screen here. The glycoproteins are specialized projections that are used to attach to the host cell. Now not all viruses have these, but many do, and it's just really a protein containing sugar chains, but it's uh, very specific and it helps them to bind to host cells. And here what you see are just some images of different shapes of um, DNA viruses and RNA viruses and some other forms of viruses that maybe you've heard of before, like the pox virus, maybe herpes virus, or adenovirus. This is a vaccination your dog can receive. Parvovirus, another dog vaccine. Retroviridae, these are reverse transcribing viruses, which we'll talk about. 
RNA viruses like the rhabdoviridae, excuse me, like the vi uh, rabies. Coronavirus is another one that if you get your dog vaccinated, you may have seen before, and many others. Let's look at some of the shapes that viruses come in. Their shape is actually determined by the nucleic acid or the capsid. There are a few different shapes that we see. There's the icosahedron. It has 20 triangular faces. And we see this in the herpes virus, like the herpes simplex virus, chicken pox, and polio. And then we see a helix, which is basically just a coiled spring, like rabies, measles, and tobacco mosaic virus, which of course affects tobacco plants. Viruses are sometimes grouped based on their shape. And here are some common viruses that affect humans. DNA viruses and RNA viruses. And here are their shapes and structures and what kinds of diseases they cause. Did you know that warts can be caused by a virus? Adenoviruses I was talking about can cause some respiratory and intestinal infections also in humans. Um, the general group of herpes viruses include many you've heard of before, the herpes simplex viruses, chicken pox viruses, shingles, infectious mononucleosis or otherwise known as mono, pox viruses, smallpox, cowpox, you've heard of these, rabies is caused by the rhabdovirus, retroviruses can cause AIDS and cancer. Now there's a couple of crazy little guys out there called viroids and prions. And these are not quite viruses, but they're somewhere in between. A viroid is really short, just hundreds of nucleotides long, which is not very long at all. They're circular, and they're a single strand of RNA that do not have a capsid, yet they can replicate. That's a little bit crazy. They're almost like a rogue RNA. RNA. They, again, they're really short, they're just a single strand of RNA, and they don't even have a capsid, yet they can replicate themselves. They are often seen in causing diseases in plants like potatoes, cucumbers, avocados, and oranges. And what they do is they cause errors in regulatory systems that control plant growth. Now proteins, these are, there's some scary diseases that go along with these. Prions are misfolded infectious proteins that can cause the misfolding of normal proteins in animals. Some can cause nervous system degeneration. In sheep, we see scrapie. In cows, we see mad cow disease or bovine spongiform encephalopathy. And in humans, the same disease, creutzfeldt jakob disease, where basically the nervous system just starts to break down all caused by these proteins that simply cause other proteins to change their shape so they don't work correctly. Now let's talk a little bit about the way that viruses replicate. They are obligate intracellular parasites. This basically means that they depend on their host cells for replication. A bacteriophage is a virus that infects bacteria and they're really commonly studied because they're kind of easy to deal with. Here they have that icosahedral head. They have a contractile tail that has a collar and a sheath that protects it. And they also have tail fibers that come from their base plate. And let's watch this. So here you see some bacteriophages docking and inserting their DNA into a host cell and then their enzymes and components are synthesized and assembled spontaneously inside of the bacteria and they cause the cell to lyse and the phage is released.
So what you just watched was an example of the lytic cycle, which causes the host cell to die. So step one, a virulent bacteriophage, in other words, it causes disease, attaches to the host cell's receptor sites. Virulent means that it causes disease. The receptor sites are those specific binding sites. The phage DNA is injected into the host cell and then is circularized. In other words, it goes into a circle. The phage DNA and proteins are synthesized by the host cell's machinery. So in other words, the host cell is going to be making the DNA and the proteins for the virus without even knowing. And then the new phages self-assemble. The host cell lyses or bursts, releasing those new phages. Kind of scary. Another way that these viruses can replicate is through the lysogenic cycle. Here again, the bacteriophage will attach to the host cell's receptor sites. This is called a temperate virus because it doesn't kill the host cells immediately, just later. The phage DNA is injected into the host cell, like you see here. But now, notice that the host cells, its DNA opens up and then the DNA of the virus is inserted right into the DNA of the host cell. This is now the prophage. The prophage is where the viral DNA is integrated into the host cell's DNA. The host cell will then, as it multiplies, it's also multiplying the DNA of the virus. Now, if there are any external factors that interfere, radiation, chemicals, etc., this lysogenic cycle, which is otherwise harmless, can suddenly become lytic in the previous picture that you saw, and then the cells will burst with the DNA of the virus being active. Let's look at <clears throat> lysogeny in HIV. The retrovirus is basically how we would categorize HIV. A retrovirus is a virus, an RNA virus, that uses reverse transcriptase to transcribe DNA from RNA. So again, this time, it's basically using reverse transcriptase as its enzyme to make DNA from RNA backwards from what we usually talk about. The HIV will attach to the receptor sites on the white blood cell and enters the cell via endocytosis, processes that you've heard about. The viral RNA and reverse transcriptase then are released from the capsid. So once the virus enters the cell right here through endocytosis, then from the, from the virus are released the reverse transcriptase and the viral RNA. Then you have reverse transcription. Here you have your viral RNA. Reverse transcriptase now makes viral DNA. You have a double-stranded section of viral DNA. This is your provirus now, RNA to DNA. That's your provirus or your viral DNA. Now this provirus is going to be inserted into the host genome, just like we saw in the lysogenic cycle in the previous slide. The provirus is then transcribed into viral RNA and then transloaded into proteins, and this is the end of lyso lysogeny. The proteins are then assembled into new HIV particles. This would be step F that you see on the diagram. And the new viruses leave the cell via lysis or budding, and then they spread. Now viruses have evolved from early cells. They were basically a naked nucleic acid with the ability to travel from cell to cell. Most likely these mutations occurred in the nucleic acids enabled viruses to escape the immune system responses. And viruses with quick mutation rates were tough enough, um, excuse me, were tough to develop vaccines for, including the flu and HIV, which is why they're not cured yet, because they mutate so quickly that we simply can't keep up in our efforts to develop effective vaccinations. Looking at viruses and some human diseases, Viral diseases are the most common illnesses, or the causes of most common illnesses, such as the common cold, the chicken pox, measles, mumps, polio, rabies, hepatitis. 
They cause infectious diseases, such as rabies, which are transmitted from an animal bite in their saliva, and then the virus affects the central nervous system, causes fever, headache, throat spasms, paralysis, and coma. And up here is an image of the rabies virus and then a rabid cat. Chickenpox, highly contagious through the skin, through contact, and it also can be transmitted airborne. Here's the virus. It is replicated in the lungs, travels to the skin through your blood vessels, and causes fever and rash. Shingles can result in adults if not all the chicken pox virus is destroyed early on and can result in high fever, weakened immune system, pneumonia. Prevention and treatment. There are antiviral drugs that interfere with the viral nucleic acid synthesis, so hopefully preventing them from synthesizing more of themselves. And then of course vaccines, which we've discussed a bit. Vaccines are just a solution that contain a harmless version of the virus or bacterium or toxin that causes the immune response when introduced to the body. Two types of, of uh, vaccines for the virus, the inactivated virus vaccine and the attenuated virus vaccine. Inactivated virus vaccines basically have viruses that don't replicate within the host, but they have the virus. Attenuated viruses are genetically altered viruses that won't actually cause the disease, but they provide better long-lasting protection. Hepatitis B, measles, mumps, rubella, chicken pox, hepatitis A, all have vaccines for them. And in fact, in 1980, we eradicated smallpox, smallpox with vaccinations. Other approaches to treating viruses and their infections. Well, we can try to control the animals that spread the disease. There are mosquito control programs or vector control programs to limit problems such as yellow fever getting annual rabies vaccines on your household pets. And in ca some cases, coyotes and wolves are even being treated orally um, with a rabies vaccine in meat to prevent them from spreading that to our household pets. Some other antiviral agents just for interest sakes. Aciclovir is a herpes simplex and chicken pox agent. AZT inhibits reverse transcriptase and retrovirus, and it slows down the lysogenic phase of an HIV infection. Protease inhibitors will disrupt capsid synthesis and slows the lytic phase of AIDS. Now, antibiotics, of course, don't work on viruses because antibiotics attack a bacterial cell's metabolic machinery. Viruses don't have their own machinery, so it won't work on them. There are also emerging viruses. There are viruses in isolated habitats well out of normally humans' range, but now we've come upon them as we've been exploring our Earth more and more. So the, some of these can infect humans once the habitats are developed or at least explored. For example, the Ebola virus was discovered in the Democratic Republic of Congo, and this is it right up here. Hantavirus caused severe pneumonia and in some cases death in southwestern U.S. Machupo virus in South America, HIV in Central America, Africa, excuse me, Central Africa, and the loss of fever virus in Western Africa. And in some cases, viruses are linked to cancer. Cancer, as you know, is the uncontrolled growth of cells. This is tr typically triggered by mutations in the genome, which is caused by external agents like cigarette smoke, asbestos, sunlight, chemicals, or radiation. But sometimes lysogenic viruses can actually cause cancer as well. For example, human T lymphotrophic virus causes le leukemia. This can happen from the mother to the infant, bodily fluids, or sexual contact. Hepatitis B, liver cancer, this is a very severe picture. Body fluids, sexual contact, and mother to infant, these are ways in which these can be transmitted. Epstein, Barr, or Burkitt's lymphoma, physical contact, and of course human papillomavirus or cervical cancer through sexual contact. So this is just a real quick survey through viruses, their structure, and how they replicate and some of the human diseases that people experience when they are, come into contact with certain viruses.